Welcome back. We're doing problem number 10. And I just drew the figure. They said a right circular cylinder with radius 5, radius 5, and height 4 has volume V. So what's the volume of this? You've, the volume of a cylinder, they give you the formula, actually, but it's just the area of the base, or the area of the, the top of the cylinder, times its height. So it's pi r squared, So where the radius is 5. So it's pi times 25, 5 squared, times the height, times 4. So v is equal to 100 pi. Fair enough. Then they say, in terms of v, what is the volume of a right circular cylinder with radius 5 and height 8? Oh, you see, I didn't even have to do all of this. Because now this new cylinder, this new cylinder is just like this cylinder, right? But instead of having height 4, it has height 8. See, I didn't even have to know that formula. Oh my god. No. I wanted to do a draw. Need the ellipse. So this new cylinder looks something like this. Although it's, I'm not drawing it really to scale, but I think you get the point. The new cylinder, you can kind of just. So the new cylinder has height eight. So what? The new cylinder is twice the size of the of the previous cylinder, right? The previous cylinder had height four, radius five. This new cylinder has radius five, height eight. So the new cylinder is going to be twice the volume. Right, the vol the volume for this is v, so the volume for the new one is it's twice as high, so it's going to have twice the volume, so it's two v. So its answer is b. You didn't even have to know all this; so you can go on the wrong track very quickly. Although if you did it that way, you could you know you'd get the right answer. Problem number eleven. Eleven. If k n and r are integers, let k so k be defined. Okay, so let k k diamond n r be defined to be true only if so k diamond is true true if if n is less than k which is less than r. Then they tell us that minus 2 diamond minus 2 diamond n 0 is true which of the following could be a possible value of n so let's just translate this into this world right so this is true at minus 2 diamond n 0 is true so that means so we just pattern match right k is minus 2 n is n and r is 0 so that means that so our n, n is just n, so that means n is less than k. k is minus 2, which is less than our r. Our r is 0. So n is less than minus 2, which is less than 0. This is kind of, I mean, obviously minus 2 is less than 0. So what? which of the following could be a possible value of n? So they give us three choices. 1 is minus 3, 2 is minus 1, and then 3 is positive 3. Well, which of these numbers is less than negative 2? Positive 3 isn't. Negative 1 is greater than negative 2. So all we're left is choice 1. Not not too hard of a problem, right? A. It just looks complicated. Your image. Invert colors. Problem 12. If 20% of x is equal to 80% of y, so I immediately, my brain converts that to decimals. So 20% of x is equal to 80% of y. Which of the following expresses y in terms of x? So we want y in terms of x, so let's solve for y. We divide both sides by 0.8, so y is equal to 0 0.20 divided by 0.8 x, right? I just I switched them around too, right? I switched the two sides, but I divided both sides by 0 0.8. That's all I did. And so y is equal to what's 0 0.2 over 0 0.8? Well, that's the same thing as 2 over 8 or 0.25x. Or y is 25% of x. And that is choice B. Next problem. It's a very cold day today. I'm, 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 my feet
feeder cold. I, I should go do run, run, run a hill or something. All right, problem number thirteen. If x, y, and z, this seems familiar. Anyway, if x, y, and z are positive integers, x, y, and z are positive integers such that the value of x plus y, x plus y is even, and the value of x plus y squared plus x plus z is odd. Which of the following is true? And then they're saying, oh, well, they give a bunch of choices. So what do we? Know? Well, this this is actually quite quite interesting. So, so let's let's see what we can say. Can we say that x is odd? X is odd. That's choice A. X is odd. If x plus y is even, if x plus y is even, then x plus y squared will also be even, right? X plus y squared is also going to be even. So this is even. And then if, but if this is even, and then this whole thing is odd, if the whole thing is odd, the only way you can add in something to an even number and get an odd number is if the thing you added was odd. Right, and you can think about that. So x plus z is odd. So we essentially know two things. x plus y is even. And we also know that x plus z is odd. Right? And how did we figure out x plus z is odd? Because we know x plus y is even. x plus y squared must be even. And the only way to get to add something to something that's even and get an odd number is if that thing you add is odd. So we know that x plus z is odd. This is interesting. So, so, so we know x plus y is even. X plus z is odd. So, can, do we know for sure that x is odd? Well, no. X could be even. X could be two. You know, y could be two, and uh, x could be two, and z could be one. So, x. We don't know that x is odd. And then choice B says x is even. Well, not necessarily. X could be odd. X could be one. Y could be one. X could be one here, and Z could be two, so th that all works. So we, choice B doesn't work either. Now choices C and D look interesting. If Z is even, if Z is even, then X is odd. That is true, because if we add these two numbers and we get an odd number, and we know that Z is even, if this number is even, then this number has to be odd. And you can try it out with numbers if you don't believe me. So C. Is true, and we could go through the other ones, but we only get have to pick one. So C is definitely true. If Z is even, then X is definitely odd, because the only way to add something to an even number and get an odd number is if you get it, if you add it to an odd number. Let's do problem number fourteen if I have time. Problem fourteen. 0 is less than x, which is less than 1. Which of the following statements must be true? Statement 1. Statement 1 is x squared is greater than x cubed. Statement 2 is x is greater than x over 2. And statement 3 says that x is greater than x to the third. So x is pretty much a fraction. It's a, it's, a, it's a positive fraction less than 1. And you know what? Let's just try out a number. Let's just try out x is equal to 1 half. And that'll simplify things. Because really, all the fractions between 0 and 1 have the same properties when you take the exponents. So let's see, is this true? 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 1 fourth is greater than 1 eighth? Well, yeah, sure. That's true. Is 1 half greater than? One fourth, right? One half divided by two is one fourth. Well, sure, that's true. And finally, is one half greater than one half to the third? Sure, one half to the third is one eighth. So one one half is definitely greater than one half to the third, right? And they're all positive numbers, so all three of them are true. So it's choice E. And that's all the time I have in this video. I will do. Problem number 15 in the next video.